Hey everyone, this is Nitro from the Rocky Valley server in the Guild Snow. So in this video, I am going to talk about Cherry. And she's an SSR that everyone should have because she was available for free in the if you play for 7 days pretty much. So given that's the case, Cherry is one of those heroes that really should be talked about and that's what I'm going to do in this video. So let's begin by talking about Cherry's talent, which is Wild Princess. And it is probably one of really the best talents in the game. Um, first, when there's no friendly units within 2 blocks of her, all damage she takes is reduced by 10%. In addition, this is the most important part, when uh, she gains a chance to act again after eliminating an enemy, and this, this part of the skill, or the talent, has a 4 turn cooldown. So what this means is, if she kills an enemy, she gets a second attack, or she can retreat if you prefer to. This second talent is incredible, absolutely incredible for PvP. Like uh, arena, world arena matches, this talent is almost unmatched, especially in the early stages of the game. In the later stages, you, I will have to admit, this talent becomes less useful because it becomes much harder for Cherry to one-shot enemy targets. But it is still a really, really powerful talent because as long as she kills off like an injured enemy, let's say an injured enemy lancer unit, she can then attack a second time and maybe kill off an enemy mage. So this wild princess talent is it just it's what defines Cherry and makes her such a good SSR character. Now, with all that said, let's talk about her classes. Let's go into the upgrade classes screen. And as with almost all these heroes, there's two branches. There's the Pegasus branch, which is her flyer branch. And then there's her side branch, which is uh, actually a ranged attacker, an assassin class. So she's a raider and a high master. There's also, last but not least, the Pegasus branch, but you know, it's only separate. It's by itself. It doesn't have like a final class, and the class skill itself is not that great. So let's talk about all her classes. So first, well, let's briefly cover Pegasus Lord. So Pegasus Lord gives her additional defense and magic defense. It makes her slightly tougher, but in general, all those side branch classes are not worth getting. Okay, her the skill is first aid, which heals a hundred percent of her uh, hit points. It sounds amazing, but a there's a cooldown of three turns, and b if you use the skill, it means she's not attacking for a turn. In general, Cherry should be healed by the healer, and she, sh she really should be attacking every single turn. So that really means this first aid skill is not that great. It's almost a trap in many ways. It makes you think that you should absolutely get it, because, you know, your attacker has a full heal skill. But in actual fact, in practice, you're better off using your healer to heal up Cherry, and then attacking with her every single turn. So, with that covered, Let's talk about, I guess, her other two classes, which is High Master and really Dragon Master. Dragon Master, ultimately, is the class you want to end up in. And that's because she is really more meant as a melee DPS character. So Dragon Master should really be her final class. Uh, that way, she's the melee attacker, you know, she does high damage, and she has Act Again to attack a second time. But, with that said, Raider and High Master are almost required for an endgame cherry. And the reason for that is because of this skill in the High Master, Shadow Raid. Okay? This skill is actually, to be fair, this skill is more focused on PvP content than it is PvE. But what Shadow Raid does is it allows her to ignore guard and attack an enemy directly, dealing 1.3 times damage. So what this really means is a high-level, well-equipped Cherry can one-shot an enemy with this skill, use wild, and then Wild Princess would activate, and then she'll get a second attack or she can retreat back. So let's say in PvP, for example, let's say your enemy has a mage or a healer that's under the protection of a lancer, like Ledin. You can move in, use Shadow Raid, which has two range by the way, attack and kill off that healer or mage, and then retreat. So. Yeah, I mean, if you kill off one key enemy character for no loss at all, that almost guarantees your win in, very frequently in PvP. So that's what the 
Shadow Raid skill is for. Now, I will note that Shadow Raid becomes much harder to one-shot enemy targets uh, as people get full gear on their, you know, healers and mages and whatnot. But at especially in the current stage of this game, um, yeah, Shadow Raid can basically much guarantee you a one-shot of any any enemy healer or mage. So that's what Shadow Raid is great for. So generally speaking, you know, if you were to, to develop Cherry early, put two Rune Stones into her, get this Shadow Raid skill, master this high ma master this class if possible, the High Master class, to get the benefits from the class mastery, which is 25 additional attack, 10%, 10 additional defense, and 10% skill for a higher crit chance. So you would just master this class and then flip her back to Dragon Master, so that she has access to the Dragon to the Shadow Raid skill, as well as being in the, her Flyer class. All right, so that's been covered. Let's then talk about, I guess, uh, her skills. And obviously, right now I'm using uh, reinforcements so that she heals after her action, and then I'm using her two two separate attack skills, which is Lightning Speed as well as lightning. I'm doing this mainly because I use her to clear goblins. So what this means is lightning constantly activates as long as you kill a target, so you endlessly do 1.5 times more damage to enemies in battle. Okay, And then lightning speed gives uh, two buffs, gale and wind ride, after the battle. So wind ride, when hit points is above 50%, Damage taken from melee attacks is decreased by 15%. And Gale gives you, I think, a 20% chance of acting again after taking action. So these two buffs are quite convenient, you know. So this is why I'm running her in this setup. For PvP, you would probably change things up. Um, I suspect that the best PvP setup would be, again, Lightning Speed, so that she gets more potential actions. Shadow Raid for the second attack, the killing attack, and ignoring guard, and then the third skill, better than reinforcement, would probably be Legion, so that she gets additional attack and defense. Because in PvP, self healing won't really take into effect that much. You know, you're more likely to heal up your cherry with a healer, so it's more important for her to do continuous sustained damage rather than have this reinforcement passive, which means Legion as opposed to reinforcements. But you know. Like obviously, of course, PvE content would be different. Uh, you would probably want reinforcements then, for sure. And you might give up the Legion, because one-shotting targets is not as important in uh, for PvE content. It always depends, of course. You might want Legion, let's say, for fighting dragons and fighting the Anarchy, as opposed to reinforcements. But yeah, it's all situation. So you would, I guess, flip around Cherry's skills very often, depending on the content you face. But the best skills for her would definitely be Lightning, Lightning Speed, Legion, Reinforcements, and last but not least, Shadow Raid. Alright, so that covers the skills that you want to use for Cherry. Let's then talk about Cherry Soldiers. Okay? And Cherry Soldiers is actually quite simple. Almost everyone uses Angels for Cherry that I've seen. It's because, again, they're, they resist magic defense. And angels just have very, very high attack and defense values, especially since their talent buffs it. So you, I almost always only see people use angels for cherry. Could you use, let's say, griffin knights? You could, because they also give attack and defense increase, right? And in fact, I believe griffin knights may have higher stats overall than angels from what I remember. I can't recall specifically, but I believe Griffin Knights actually do have higher attack and defense values than Angels. They just have less magic defense, and that right there makes them less suitable for use. It's overall, generally speaking, when you're leveling up, uh, leveling up troops, soldiers that is, you only choose one of them and you stick to upgrading that single one. So, given that Basically, angels have more utility against ice dragons, for example, and they have overall similar performance as griffin knights do. You're better off upgrading angels than you are upgrading griffin knights. 
Of course, if you did have the resources to do both, by all means, upgrade Griffin Knights and upgrade Angels. But my personal opinion is the Angel performance against PvE targets is not that much better than uh, Angels. And as a result, you're better off just upgrading Angels and using them exclusively rather than up upgrading two separate units, you know, and having to pay the gold, you know, as well as all those uh, items that you need to upgrade two separate units. So, since, ch since really Cherry just uses one unit, which is the Angels, it really simplifies things. In addition, Angels, as a side note, are also usable by Leon, right? So if you have Leon and Cherry, you're just upgrading one unit and two units benefit. You don't have to upgrade like a third unit Griffin Knight and maybe the fourth unit Vampire Bats. So that covers, yeah, <laughs> that really just covers Cherry's units, which is the uh, Angels. So at this point, let's talk about Cherry's equipment. And her early game equipment is quite simple. Even though I don't have it leveled up, I pretty much have this setup, which is shown right now. So you upgrade Last Knight for uh, Cherry, of course. You upgrade Survival Vest because it gives defense. And generally speaking, what I find is Cherry ends up attacking enemies in the melee a lot. So defense would benefit her more than, let's say, um, hit points. Next stat to upgrade would be, or sorry, next equipment to upgrade would be Performer Mask. And the whole point of Performer Mask is that after you take action, it decreases the enemy's attack and intelligence by 20%, and this lasts one turn. The main thing about, the main reason to use Performer Mask is because, you know, by decreasing the enemy attack and intelligence, you increase the chances of Cherry surviving, right? Unlike Leon, Cherry cannot attack and retreat, unless you, you waste Wild Princess that way. So since Cherry can't attack and retreat, you, this uh, confusion effect of reducing the enemy's uh, attack and intelligence may keep her alive in situations that she may otherwise die in. So that's the reason for Performer Mask. And last but not least is, assault, of course, Assault Ring, because Assault Ring adds attack, it adds defense, and it just basically increases Cherry's overall survivability while increasing her attack. So that's it for the regular equipment for Cherry uh, before you get SSRs. Now, let's talk about Cherry's final equipment. And I'm going to, as usual, bring up that Google spreadsheet that was created by someone else. So, give me a moment. Alright, here we are. So, Cherry, as, her, as a melee attacker in her... Sorry. <laughs> as a melee attacker in her Dragon Master class, she is able to use axes and lances. That's her two primary weapons. Okay, So as I said, starting weapon is usually the last knight, just because it's you know convenient to have. If you don't ha but her end game equipment is generally considered to be Ragnarok. Okay, And the reason is because Ragnarok, like the last knight, adds a lot of attack, plus 10% attack. In addition, Ragnarok has, the out of any weapon, it provides the highest number amount of uh, plus attack value at 117. Yes, it provides less hit points, but at, at the end of the day, for melee attackers, attack is king. So Ragnarok, this axe, is the best one. And the most important aspect of Ragnarok is its second effect, which is that before battle, it actually deals one times attack damage to the enemy, okay? This second skill is actually ridiculously powerful when you think about it, because there's a lot of um, there's a lot of soldiers that have effects that protect their characters. For example, Shrine Maidens, when they're at 100% hit points, they reduce physical damage taken by like 50% or more than 50%. So Ragnarok, by applying damage to the enemy before battle, disables that effect right there. Okay. It can also disable things like the full moon enchant, where if the unit hit points is above 80%, they get 10% additional attack and defense. You know? It can disable, uh, similarly, it can disable that same effect that flyers, flying units have. There's the training ground effect where if they're above 80% hit points, 
they get plus 20% attack and defense. So Ragnarok can disable that as well. And then, you know, for enemies like, uh, let's say, Sorceress that provide plus attack, plus magic defense, again, Ragnarok would disable all those effects. So, just being able to deal damage to the enemy before combat occurs makes Ragnarok by far the best weapon for Cherry. And actually, it's really the best axe, period. <laughs> if you get Ragnarok, you know, you want several copies of them because any melee character that can use Ragnarok really should use it, if possible. So that is Cherry's final weapon. Now, let's talk about her armor. And actually, in the case of Cherry, she's actually pretty versatile when it comes to armor. And it actually depends on whether you're doing PvP or PvE content that which armor she uses matters. If you're just doing PvE, it's very, very obvious. The best armor is Last Rites because it provides plus defense, plus 10% defense, and when your character is at full hit points, so character and units, damage taken is reduced by 40%. That's a huge damage reduction. That right there makes Last Rites the best armor for PvE contents. However, for PvE, you know, everyone else, everyone will be running, let's say, cherries with Ragnarok and basically methods to injure a target before they attack it with another attack. So given that's the case, Last Rites is actually quite crappy for PvP. So in that case, you would probably want a different armor, of course. And other armors that are good for Cherry are, let's say, uh, the Demon Lizard skin, which, when attacked, there's a 50% chance to deal one random debuff to the enemy. So, you know, if it's just, it's convenient because you you don't know which debuff this Demon Lizard skin is going to apply, but it could reduce the enemy damage, you know, it could deal damage to them after they attack, if they get poisoned for like, let's say 20% damage. You know, it's just random, but it helps. So it would definitely help then an effect that would never kick in. So Demon Lizard Skin is one of the better options for PvP. The other option for PvP would be Gargoyle Jacket, right? because its secondary effect is when attacked, defense increases by 15%. So yeah, again, it's just the difference between Last Rites and Gargoyle Jacket is just that you get an additional 5% defense and 5% hit points when you're attacked. That's basically it. So rather than having an effect that never kicks in, you're better off having an effect that would definitely uh, apply. Overall, between Demon Lizard Skin and Gargoyle Jacket, I would say Demon Lizard Skin is a bit better but that's my personal opinion. I would like to think the random debuff is a bit better than, I guess, plus 15% defense. But each to, it is an option. That's the thing. Gargoyle Jacket is definitely an option. So yeah, those are the three armors for Cherry that she can use. You know? Last rights for PvP. And if you get, la just a quick note, if you get last rights, I would say level that up first, max it out, give it to Cherry. You know, later on, feel free to level up a Demon Lizard skin and Gargoyle jacket, but there's no need to rush for those. Because at the end of the day, PvP is less important in this game than clearing, let's say, the top level dragons. And against the top level dragons, last rites would be way better. So, yeah, that pretty much sums it up. Alright, after that, let's talk about helmets. And in the case of Cherry, it's actually very, very obvious. The one you want is this one, right here. I can't pronounce this. Jormungard? Jormungander? Sure. Jormungander's Eye. And what it, its effect is, after action, there's a 50% chance to reduce the damage dealt by 15% for one enemy within two blocks for one turn. So, in other words, it is just like her... Uh, it's just like her previous equipment, which applied a 20% attack and defense decrease, Performer's Mask. However, the difference is this one is a damage, uh, damage dealt reduction. So it would actually stack with any debuff that applies minus, minus attack or minus int. So that would, that's what makes Jormungander's Eye uh, the best SSR, because it can stack with minus attack or minus intelligence debuffs. So, so, yeah, quite straightforward for helmets. You know, there's multiple options, but it's easy to see which one's the best. 
last but not least, let's talk about her accessory. Now, in terms of accessory, she is honestly just like Leon, okay? Any plus attack accessory would work for her. You get one attack plus attack SSR accessory? Please, by all means, upgrade it to max. Um, you know, whether it's Overlord's badge or let's say, you know, Slayer's emblem, wing, shin guards, whatever. Any of these physical attack accessories, if you get one, max it out by all means. But if you're talking about her best uh, attack accessory, the one that's best for her in uh, end game and PvP content, just like Leon, it would be Slayer's emblem. Because again, in PvP, you face a lot of flyers. So this 8% attack bonus and then add an additional 10-12% attack against flyers is very, very useful. Um, yeah, that pretty much sums it up. I mean, in terms of other items that she can use, you can't go wrong with any of these, right? Because, you know, this, for example, Elven Ring would add additional attack and defense when she attacks, which is, of course, useful. Right? Wing Shin Guards gives her more survivability when she's attacked, which is again useful because Cherry can't attack and retreat like Leon. Right? Even Lone Star Amulet, when no allies within two blocks, she gets additional 10% attack and defense. And you know this actually stacks with her talent, where she gets, where she I think takes less damage when she's when there's no allies within two blocks. So that's useful for her too. So yeah, I mean all of her these SSR accessories are useful. I would say the only one that's not that great, it would be Judge's Talisman because you don't fight holy units that often. So that, I would say Judge's Talisman is probably the weakest one of the SSR accessories. But other than that, you can use any SSR accessory that you get and can't go wrong. But it's just at the end, when you want to upgrade you know, her uh, accessory to the best one, I would say it's probably the Slayer's Emblem. So that pretty much covers it for Cherry's equipment. This was actually surprisingly short compared to, I guess, the other videos because most of Cherry's choices are surprisingly straightforward. You know, in terms of units, she only has one. In terms of classes, you want to master both of them. Um, yeah, I at this point I don't have that much to say. Cherry, really, what I'm finding with Cherry, especially at this stage in the game where most people do not have SSR armors for their mages and healers and so on, Cherry is absolutely dominant right now. Be and that's because of uh, the Shadow Raid skill. Yeah. If your Cherry has a level 50 Ragnarok and an SSR Assault Ring, you know Shadow Raid is probably going to guaranteed one-shot an enemy character, enemy mage or enemy healer. And then you get a second action, so you can run away right there. So right from turn one, you've killed an enemy character and you've lost nobody which easily wins you the match right after that. So, but at the end of the day, you know, later on, once everyone gets SSR armors, or full SSR equipment for all their characters at level 50, Cherry's Shadow Ray generally isn't able to one-shot targets anymore, and that's when it becomes weaker. But, you know, in the current stage, enjoy how overpowered Cherry is. That pretty much sums it up. So, thanks for watching, everyone. I hope you found this video useful. Um, if I've missed anything or if you have any comments or questions, please leave them in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, please do subscribe to my channel. And this is Nitro uh, from the Rocky Valley server in the Guild Snow. I hope you all enjoyed this, and thanks for watching. Nitro out.